back. This is my second deck tech here. And this week we're going to be talking about Norn the Wary. So most Norn builds are chaos um, kind of type builds. And uh, it, that is a lot of fun. I have played that Norn deck. It's, it's, it's a blast to play. But I wanted to try and do something new with Norn. And I noticed that a lot of... There was several new cards that came out over the last couple of years that kind of really supported this deck. So I wanted to get into, um, or this deck idea that I kind of came up with. So I really want to do, uh, kind of go in and, and show you um, what I've been doing with Norin. Uh, so uh, if you guys, if, for those that don't know, uh, when a player, uh, this is Norin the Wary, and when a player plays a spell or a creature attacks, remove Norin uh, the wary from the game then return to play under its owner's control at end of turn So he always comes back to you um, Even if somebody else takes control of him or whatever he always comes back to you uh, Kind of the hard thing is is he only has um, one toughness So there are ways that he can be removed um, That you just need to be conscious about um, Activated abilities on the field that do damage to creatures and stuff like that Anyway, I would say this is kind of a borderline group slug deck, and so uh, here we go. Let's go into the deck. Um, first, oh, by the way, uh, my friend got this uh, card altered for me, and uh, I absolutely loved it. Um, so Norn's here on this one side, and then when he um, leaves play, I just have this on the other side there. So he leaves play, so he's not there, so I just flip this thing over. And, uh, and then when he comes back, he's there again. Okay, all right, here we go. Let's, let's move into the deck here. So um, I have 25 um, basic mountains uh, from the Time Spiral block, which Norrin is from. Okay, and then let's move this here. Okay, so we got Valakut, so I have 25 mountains. I might be able to do some burn damage to players or creatures with this. Strip Mine uh, just produces colorless mana and uh, can blow up stuff. A little cycling here. And it's a desert, which has become relevant for some reason. Um, so I can use Norin to tap for red mana if I need to, or I can just use this for this colorless mana. And that's another desert. And then we have Ramanop Ruins, um, which taps for colorless. And then if I absolutely need to, I can pay a life and tap for red. And then I have, what, three deserts, so I can sacrifice a desert to do two damage to each opponent. <clears throat> Buried Ruin, uh, Recursion for Artifacts. There's a lot of artifacts in here. This is um, some a little bit of life gain and allows me to, uh, I believe, allows me to search for, for an artifact. Okay. Foundry of the Councils. Um, it's a sacrifice outlet that I can use to, or well, I can sack this to get some Thopters, to get some Flying Blockers if I need them, or if I just need some creatures entering the battlefield. Uh, Phyrexia's Core, a uh, sack outlet for uh, artifacts, and I can gain a little bit of life. There's an indestructible artifact. Uh, Kirk Heap, so this is going to line up with a Norn card here in a few minutes. I'll try and mention it again uh, when we get there, but um, or well, I'll just mention it now. Cloudstone Curio, so I can basically um, put a Kobold in and return another creature to my hand. All right, Ghost Quarter um, allows me to blow up a land, and that's good. Myriad Landscape, just a little bit of land ramp. Rogue's Passage, uh, so makes a creature unblockable. All right, so here's some Norin cards. All right, so whenever a creature um, enters the battlefield under your control, Impact Tremors deals one damage to that each opponent. Uh, so Norn's bouncing in and out of quite a bit, and this will do a lot of damage. Um, this one's been really great for Norn too, so whenever another permanent enters the battlefield, so this could be a land, Norn, anything, um, under my control, each opponent has to mill. Perforos, um, again, lots of Norn triggers, two damage to each opponent. 
War Storm Surge. Um, it's it's uh, definitely an Orin card because Orin's bouncing in and out a lot. So I can choose to do um, his power to to um, a creature or a player. Uh, Pandemonium is dangerous. <laughs> this is a dangerous card, but um, this is this is an Orin card, so um, it, it anybody can do it. Uh, they they have the, it has the same ability as uh, War Storm Surge, but uh, your opponents can do this too, so it can it can be dangerous. All right, and uh, Cloudstone Curio. So when Orin comes in, I can return um, um, other another creature to my hand, or let's say Norin comes in and I want to return an artifact creature, I can. Uh, so that's good. Confusion in the ranks is probably the best card for Norin. Um, you don't even need to cast creature spells anymore. You can just let Norin um, come in and out of play and, uh, and take out your opponent's stuff. Um, Possibility Storm is uh, really good for this deck because it keeps um, players off their counter magic and it just kind of disrupts the game. Um, my game plan doesn't really change that much. It's it's still continuous throughout, but for other players, they might be trying to cast a removal spell and end up getting a land ram spell or something like that. So it's it's proven to be really good in this deck. Okay, so here we go into land ramp. So Sword of the Animist, uh, I can pay two, equip to uh, Norin, and then attack with Norin. Um, Norin goes out of play, and I get to go get a land to put it into the battlefield tapped. Moon Silver Spear. Um, um, so this one I can equip to Norin and then attack, and um, and then Norin leaves play, and I get a four four angel. I'm sorry, we're still in Norin cards. We're not in ramp cards yet, but um, uh, Genesis Chamber just makes a ton of mirrors, um, and your opponents will get mirrors too. But you know what? That doesn't really matter because you're going to get way more min more mirrors than they will. Oblivion Sower. Um, so this is the land ramp now. So I was one way that I could ramp. I was like, well, I could exile the top four cards of somebody's library and hopefully get a land or two out of that. Um, and then I remove a little chunk of their library as well. If I can get this um, coming in and out with Cloudstone Curio, it's I can start removing parts of their deck. So pilgrim's eye um it lets me get a land and put it into my hand and it's a flying thopter artifact which is relevant soul ring uh this is you know mana ramp whatever yeah you guys coalition relic everybody knows those cards there uh thematic compass so this is land ramp here and then i it turns into a maze of it if you flip it over solemn yeah and then Chandra is a, I would say it's kind of like a card draw and it's also a mana ramp. Um, and if you can get down here to her neg seven ability, uh, that's pretty good too, being able to burn people for five damage every time you cast a spell. <laughs> uh, Tamiyo's Journal, um, this makes uh, clue artifact tokens, uh, which is good. And, and if I get three clues, then I can sacrifice to go find something specific in my library. Um, Skull Clamp, I've got a lot of 1-1 of one, one creatures kind of coming in the battlefield, so I can clamp for card draw. Mind Stone is card draw, mana, same idea, card draw, mana. And uh, Smuggler's Copter, it's crew one, so I can use Norn to crew, and then Norn just leaves play, and this thing's ready to go into combat, and it can give me some cards. Codex, okay, so here we go into some recursion. So we've got Codex Shredder. Um, so I can return whatever I need to my uh, to my hand if I pay five here. Uh, Doretti is um, his minus two is going to be um, really good for us, uh, being able to sack artifacts to bring artifacts back. So I could sack a clue to get a really good artifact or something like that. Uh, Scrap Mastery. Um, yeah, just scrap all my artifacts in play or whatever I have in play for, for the stuff that's in my graveyard. Feldon's going to let me recur creatures as artifacts. 
Goblin Welder, sack an artifact, bring an artifact back. <clears throat> Trade Post. Um, so I, actually like all the abilities for this deck here, um, all of them are, are good. Uh, even even just, just to gain four life, I could discard a card uh, or, or getting a goat or whatever. Um, God Pharaoh's Gift. So um, I thought that, you know, bringing some of my creatures back, uh, this was a really good recursion card. It brings them back as four fours, and with something like War Storm Surge, that's four damage every time a creature comes back. Juckle Hops. <laughs> This is kind of, this was, I used to play this just um, willy-nilly. I would just blow up the world and, and not even pay attention to what was going on. Um, but it's actually become a really good card for this deck. If I can get a few of my enchantments in play, uh, like Warstorm Surge, and then blow up the world, Norrin leaves play, then he comes back in, and then he starts doing damage, uh, which is which is good. All right. Um, Vandal Blast, destroy all artifacts that your opponents control. Blasphemous Axe, just a nice little removal spell here. Chaos Warp, um, so another removal spell. Scar from Existence, um, so I am in red, so I'm kind of limited to what I can affect, but... Um, I might need to get rid of a uh, Planeswalker or an uh, Enchantment or whatever, so this is going to let me take care of whatever I need to take care of. Duplicant, um, again, like if I made a Kobold and I had Cloudstone Curio in, I could return Duplicant to my hand, and then I could cast Duplicant again, exiling another creature under it. It's just removal. Uh, Strionic Resonator, uh, copy triggered abilities. That seems pretty good in this deck. There's lots of triggered abilities. Uh, Panar Monocon, same same idea, just copying those triggered abilities. Um, Mirage Mirror seems good because I could copy like Warstorm Surge or uh, maybe Impact Tremors or something like that and get some extra triggers uh, there. Or whatever other people have. Um, there's that. Hammer of Perforos. Uh, it gives my creatures haste. And I can uh, sacrifice a land to put a 3 3 colorless golem enchantment artifact creature token onto the battlefield. So I've got some more artifacts to work with. Mirror Battle Sphere. Um, so we were making a bunch of mirror with uh, one of the cards that I showed earlier. This is just, you know, I could tap those mirror into this and do some burn damage. And it makes more mirror, and, and uh, it just adds up. Uh, Descent of the Dragons. So actually, I'm going to show this card first. We'll go Mog Infestation. So I was thinking with this that I could destroy all my creatures, actually. And then I get two goblins for each one I destroy. And then I could turn them all into 4-4 four, four Flying Dragons. Um, but this is also a nice removal spell if somebody's got a lot of big stuff that I don't want to deal with anymore. Do, do, do. Um, Hangerback Walker was big in standard when it wasn't standard. And I just wanted to go ahead and use it. So um, so it's in here and it makes flying thopters. And flyers are, uh, are good. I don't have a whole lot of them in this deck. Um, Tempt with Vengeance is... Uh, is a really wonderful card too. Actually, last time I played it, I think I played it for three and I ended up getting 12 because everybody wanted the three guys as well for blockers. Um, and then it's triggers with War Storm Surge or, or Impact Tremors or whatever. Uh, Cranko, just crank out a bunch of tokens. Pia and Kieran Nalar. So they're going to make a couple flyers, and then it's going to let me sacrifice artifacts to do uh, two damage to target creature or player. Dragon Master Outcast. Um, actually, I just won a game the other day with this guy because uh, I got up to the point where I had the lands, and then I put Possibility Storm in, and then I put Confusion in the ranks in, and I was just stealing everybody's creatures. It was so good. So good. Um... Siege Gang Commander, so it's going to make three goblins along with it, 
And then, uh, so if you have something like Perforos out, that's what, two, four, six, eight, eight damage that each opponent's gonna take, and then you can sacrifice goblins to do two damage to target creature or player. Um, Kiki Jiki, so I don't have any of his combo cards in here. I'm strictly using him for cards like this or that card back there. Uh, so um, I'm just using him to get some value out of the deck. I don't need to combo off. I, I prefer not to combo off if I can. <clears throat> um, Warm Coil Engine, uh, yep, seems pretty good for this deck. Sizzle, uh, this is basically lightning bolt times three. So um, each opponent, I'm usually in a four player pod, so it'll be, you know, one, one mana for each opponent and they each take three damage. That seems pretty good. Um, Storm Breath Dragon, uh, it has protection from white, so I don't have to worry about um, ridiculous stuff like Path to Exile and all that. Swords of Plowshares, well, I, don't guess, I guess that's not ridiculous, but I don't have to worry about that. Um, if and, and then I can go monstrous, and then it's going to do uh, damage to each opponent uh, equal to the number of cards in that player's hand. So if you get the blue player that likes to hold all the cards, that's, uh, that's really good. And then just a few other cards that are kind of like the Norn cards up front, but they interact differently with the deck. So we have uh, Firebrand Archer here. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, Firebrand Archer deals one damage to each opponent. So I got lots of artifacts in here that aren't creatures. Um, Sulfuric Vortex. Uh, so we're just kind of hurting everybody, including ourselves. But I like this line of text down here. If a player would gain life, that player gains no life instead. And then we have Reckless Fire Weaver. So whenever an artifact enters the battlefield under your control, this guy deals one damage to each opponent. Tons of artifacts in here, so that's gonna be really good for the deck. Um, landfall triggers here. I don't really have a whole lot to trigger landfalls, but uh, whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, Tunneling GOP deals one damage to each opponent. And then we have Emerald Gear Smasher, so I can sacrifice artifact to do uh, two damage to each opponent. And then we have uh, Fiery Confluence. Um, so I actually got a really good deal on these. They're kind of expensive right now at, at like 15 or 15 or 16 bucks a piece. But um, I, I got a couple of them for like three or four bucks because somebody wasn't checking up, uh, updating their, their um, stuff. So. Anyway, um, I can choose the same mode three times, so I could do six damage to each opponent if I wanted to with this spell for four. And then we have, um, you saw that I had a lot of the colorless land up front, and it's kind of to bring this guy out because I can use him in effect uh, every turn to ping a player. Or just remove little creatures, uh, make it so stuff can't block or attack, and then I could draw a card if I can actually get to two colorless. So um, this guy, uh, again, this is this has become a pet card for me. Anyway, thank you very much. Uh, that's my deck. Uh, please subscribe and favorite, and uh, and I'll see you again next week. I think I'm doing an undeck next week, so I think it's going to be green white, and it's going to be Doctor Julius Jumble Morph will be my deck next week. So thanks so much uh, for watching and I'll see you next week.